All right, this is a video uh, people have been asking for for a while. I'm going to set the bias um, on this Marshall DSL 40C. I'm just going to use a regular multi tester. You can get something like this on eBay or Lowe's or Radio Shack. Uh, they're not very expensive. You can buy bias buddies and tube testers, different things uh, that actually make the job maybe a little easier. But for you know a single amp, occasionally just to set the bias or change out the tubes, you all you need is a multi tester. Okay. Just a quick word of common sense, uh, we're talking about 450 volts or so. Um, please be aware of where your hands are and tools are at all times uh, because you don't want to light yourself up. All right, let's get started. All right, so you're going to want to flip the amp down on its face. And I like to leave this hanging off the edge of the table just a little bit because it helps when it comes time to uh, remove the amp itself. You can put a little bit of upward pressure on that. Okay, we're going to start by removing the uh, eight screws along the back of the amp here. Let me grab a screwdriver. Okay, you're going to use a number two Phillips and just remove all of these screws. And uh, be aware that there is a, uh, a grommet style washer um, that you don't want to lose. Sometimes they come off, sometimes they're pressed into the Tolex, but something like that. And uh, just set these aside. Okay, so just going to lift this up out of the way. And again, just be aware that some of these... Uh, Washers may have stuck and you don't want them to fall off, so just grab them if they're loose and set that aside. All right, so I'm temporarily going to unplug the speaker here uh, that comes out of the 16 ohm jack. So, and I'm using a number three Phillips to remove these screws, even though a number two uh, probably would work. And be aware that you have the same kind of grommet style washers on these as well. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, grab a hold of the amp head itself. Um, there's a couple of holes where um, I'm assuming this could be used for the 100 watt model uh, because there's a spot for more tubes. And luckily for us, we could just use those. And I'm going to push up from the bottom. This is where I was talking about leaving the front of the amp hanging out a little bit. Get it out of the way here. Okay, and carefully remove it. Don't smash your tubes. Okay, just gonna set it right like this. And back here where that plate came off, it'll support the amp itself on both sides. Okay, so just leave the amp like this. Next thing we're gonna do is plug this in and turn it on, let it warm up for about 15 minutes. Make sure you plug your speaker back in uh, and I'll be back. All right, so while we're waiting for this to warm up, um, I've got it in standby mode. I've got my speaker plugged in, and I'm going to let it warm up for 15 minutes or so, okay? Um, I'm just going to cover real quick. For this first part, I'm going to use these little spring-loaded uh, mini hooks. Now, uh, these types of probes are going to make the job easier. You can get a, a, a kit with these and alligator clips and regular probes on eBay for like $20, okay? But this is going to make the job easier. And the other thing I'm going to cover real quick is... I'm actually going to go about this process a little bit backwards. Um, I'm really just going to show, you know, how to bias the amp using the uh, test pins and the trim pots. Uh, and then after that, I'll go into how to measure the plate voltage. Okay, when you get into the plate voltage, we're talking like 100 and, uh, 450 uh, volts, rather. Um, something to keep in mind is that these trim pots are reverse from the pins and the tubes, okay? So when I actually test, and you'll see this in just a minute here, when I test this right pin here, uh, which is this, this power tube here, uh, and the center is a ground, I'm going to adjust the left trim pot and vice versa. So when I test this uh, left pin, I'm going to adjust this right trim pot. Why that is, I do not know, but that's how it works. Okay, so let me get the camera mounted here. I'm going to try to show you as closely as possible uh, what we're going to do. All right, so a quick word on the tester here. You're going to want to set uh, your tester to DC millivolts, and uh, I've got the lowest setting here, 200 millivolts. Um, again, this is sort of the reverse of what you would normally do. Normally, you would measure your plate voltage and then calculate 
your bias setting, uh, but I'm just going to shoot for 38, okay? If you get it 37, 38, you're right in the ballpark, and I think that's what most people want to see. We will go through and measure the plate voltage, and I'll show you that calculator at the end, but I think most people are here. They just want to know how to do it, okay? So you've got trim pots here. You've got these test points here, and we're going to use our little spring-loaded uh, mini hook uh, probes, okay? So let me zoom in here and see if I can actually get you a shot of um, attaching these. All right, so I'm going to get my ground set first here. And uh, I'm just going to go to that middle pin. And I'm going to get it down quite a ways because we're going to be, we're going to be removing the, uh, the positive probe a couple of times. Because when you adjust one tube, uh, the other will fluctuate as well. So they're sort of in direct relationship to each other. When you turn one up, the other's going to go down. And so it's sort of a balancing act, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and take this right one, which of course, again, is the left trim pot. Okay, make sure it's on there good. All right, Let's swing over to the trim pots here. Okay, so we're on the right, we're on the right pin. We're going to do the left trim pot. And I'm just going to use a small... Uh, precision screwdriver flat. Uh, make sure when you're working again, you don't want to drop it or anything. Okay, I've got it in standby mode still, and I'm going to go ahead and flip that on, and let's see where we're at. Okay, so that one's 38.3, and again, I have biased this amp already, okay? But I just want to show you here, basically what the, the deal would be, uh, if you were wanted to get it in that 38, 37 range, um, it's extremely small increments here. So again, we're going to adjust the left one if we want to uh, actually manipulate the right tube, okay? So I'm just going to dial it a hair, and you'll see how much it changes, okay? And all I'm doing, I'm basically giving just a minute turn here. Um, let me zoom it out so you might actually be able to see it. See, I'm only spinning it just about that much. You know, just a hair, okay? So now I need to get that one back in that 38 range, okay? So now I'm just going to dial it. Counterclockwise brings it up. Now I'm really high. Okay, my wall voltage is low too. I only have about 118, 118 and a half volts coming out of my wall. So when we measure my plate voltage, you'll see that's slightly low. Uh, but I'm going to bias it as though I had it at 120 volts. Okay, so there's 38.4, 38.5. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the other side here real quick. That's fluctuating a little bit higher. Okay. So I'm just going to take this off. You could put it in standby mode if you want. I'm going to move it to this pin here. Make sure it's on there good. And that one's kind of high. Okay, so to adjust that uh, left pin, I'm going to manipulate this right trim pot. And I need to dial it down. So I go clockwise with it. Okay, so this is sort of the balancing act. Um, obviously, it's easier to do when you're not on camera. Okay, so if I could get the other side to, to basically uh, fluctuate in that 38.3 to 38.6 range, uh, like this one is doing, I'm happy with that. Okay, so keep in mind that the bias too is it's kind of it's a it's a matter of personal preference. I mean, they use a 70% dissipation um, value. Um, to sort of go by, but really it's a matter of taste. Um, let's go ahead and test that other one real quick. You know, if you have it a little high, it's going to be a little bit more harsh. You're going to get more growl out of it, uh, but you can burn your tubes up quicker. I'm going to turn that down just a hair because it is fluctuating on the high side. So again, I need to be on the left. If you turn it down too low, it's going to be running cool. And you'll see on the calculator, there's quite a quite a range. Some people like it. They think maybe it sounds more musical. They may don't play with distortion. But you might not get that martial growl out of it if you go too cool with it. 
or maybe you maybe you run with pedals for your distortion and you don't need that break up okay so all right I'm gonna finish this up real quick get them right where I want I'm gonna get the camera out of my nose and then uh, we'll go ahead and test the plate voltage I'll show you that calculator and then uh, we'll put it back together all right so let's take a look here we're going to be measuring the plate voltage, okay? And this this voltage can be used to calculate um, the proper bias setting. And I say proper it's as a baseline, a guideline, okay? Because the proper bias setting is what sounds good to your ears, really, okay? But I know that the guitar community here on YouTube can be a little bit harsh, so I'm going to go through this process uh, in case you want to see how to do it, okay? And I just use the the Weber bias calculator online. I'll show you that here in just a minute. All right, so I'm going to go to this uh, pin here that's got a brown wire soldered to it. And over here, it's got a red wire soldered to it. I'm going to show you this one. You can test them both, and I recommend that you do. Um, but that one's kind of in the way, you know, of the camera. It's going to be a little more difficult to see. Okay. I've got my uh, tester set to DC volts, 600 volts. Okay. Because we're talking about 450 volts, you've got to be up in this high range. Okay. I've got an alligator clip. For a negative and I've got a, a probe here for my positive and I'm just gonna go ahead and try to get a good bite on the chassis here okay so I'm gonna go right where this screw hole is and I'm gonna try to get in on that screw uh, in on the threads a little bit with the alligator clip okay so what you're gonna want to do is pay attention to where everything is don't drop any tools you know try to keep a steady hand um, I know it's not recommended to touch the chassis while you do this but what I do is this rubber it's got a little rubber uh, pad here I'm just gonna rest my pinky on that this is insulated now obviously if it wasn't a good practice would be to not touch any part of the chassis and ground yourself out okay um, but I've done this so okay so I'm just gonna hold the meter out of the way I'm gonna touch this brown wire down here and try to maintain a steady hand while I do it okay and we're right there 450 449 so I guess 100 118 volts isn't really uh, affecting it too much at all okay so there's my plate voltage all right if I wanted to test the other one I basically would find that pin where the red wire connects to on the other tube and do the same process okay so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut to um, I'm going to cut to the uh, calculator all right so you could just do a quick google search for weber bias calculator with 1b uh, the top results is probably the page you want you can take note of the uh, url there if you want uh, you'll need to drop this down and select your tube type your power tube type which on ours is the el34 on the dsl40c and it was 450 volts uh, 449 i guess it really ended up at but calculate the bias and it returns a value of 38.8 uh, and it's providing that value in milliamps and you may recall we were me measuring millivolts um, and that's because the test points uh, on the amp have a uh, resistor installed so it actually makes the calculation of the translation for you you can also scroll down further on the page and it gives you some various uh, bias settings based on um, differing plate voltages uh, and then it also gives you sort of a range from hot to cool that you could also play around with so anywhere from 39 milliamps to 28 milliamps um, on that particular uh, tube type for that voltage and you know you might want to play around with some of those values and see how it impacts the overall sound and feel of your amp so all right let's throw this thing back together all right let's throw it back together here you're going to want to unplug your speaker real quick temporarily okay grab a hold of the tube holes in the back and you may need to kind of caulk it off sideways and support it in the front a little bit. And then you need to find the hole. Okay. Get all four of these in real quick. All right, let's throw the back on here. Oh, don't forget to hook up your speaker that goes in the 16 ohm speaker output. And pull it off to the side a little bit and it fits better. Okay, so hopefully this video has been helpful. Um, you know, if you get it, if you get them both approximately the same in that 37, uh, 38 millivolt range, uh, you're probably good. Uh, but I would encourage you to experiment. 
uh, different bias settings and see how you like it. I like my amp to have the growl that it, I bought it for, so I don't want mine low, but you may. Uh, if you found this video helpful, give me that thumbs up. I appreciate that. That helps me out. And uh, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more of this type of stuff. Um, I do all kinds of videos, working on cars, computers, appliance repair, amps, guitars. Uh, so it's kind of a all-around DIY channel. Um, leave questions and comments below. And if you see that I did something wrong, don't be afraid to mention it nicely. And uh, use caution. Pay attention to where your hands and your tools are. And uh, after you're done, crank it up, play it loud. Thanks for watching. Have fun.